haven't been here before, I'm Bobby G. Wow, look at us, huh? Self home quarantine. What crazy days we live in. Let me just start off by saying that my heart and my mind is with you as we struggle to get through these difficult times of this historical moment in our lives until hopefully this thing peaks out and goes away and we can reclaim our lives and get back outside and enjoy ourselves. So here we are in the kitchen. A little bigger than the kitchen that was in my RV. Uh, a little bit more stepping space in here, but not too big. It's just perfect size the way I love it. So what are we doing here today? I've got something I want to share with you. Something that I love. Something you're going to love when I get done showing you what it can do. I love to cook and one of the things I love to do most is grill. When it comes to kitchen gadgets, I've always been the skeptic. You know, there's a, there's a gadget out there to do everything, every the simplest task in your kitchen, there's a gadget out there for it. Me, I like to keep things pure and clean and simple with good quality cookware and a good quality knife. This is my blender, and this is my chopper, my dicer, my everything. I can pretty much do everything I want with these few basic items. However, I can't barbecue with this stuff. I can't grill. So I hit the computer, I started doing all the research, pulling up every indoor grill that I could find, scouring and sorting and going through every review of every product. I decided to go ahead and pick up the Ninja Foodie Grill and Air Fryer. It's another uh, Ninja Foodie pressure cooker that also air fries, but it doesn't grill. This is the grill. It grills and it grills good. And I am picky. I would almost say that it grills better. That's right, I said that. So what I'm going to do is over the span of uh, a few days here because I can't eat it all myself and you know, I'm kind of rationing. Uh, I'm gonna cook up some chicken pork and steak and maybe some chicken wings if I can find them next time I go to the store. Show you exactly how this works and how absolutely amazing and wonderful it is. This is the Ninja Foodi Indoor Grill. It sears, sizzles, and air fry crisps. It uses a cyclonic grilling technology that heats the grilling grate to 500 degrees Fahrenheit, enabling it to cook just as fast as an outdoor grill, leaving grill marks, perfect char grill results, wide temperature range of 105 degrees Fahrenheit to 500 degrees Fahrenheit, it enable functions grill, air crisp, roast, bake, and dehydrate. The, the uh, Footy Grill comes with this little booklet here. It is an owner's manual with cooking tips as well as a number of recipes, the beginner recipes here to get you started. These cooking charts are very, very handy because the temperatures and times range differently than if you were using an actual grill or a deep fryer. The other foods here, even frozen foods, you can put frozen foods right in there and cook frozen foods. All right, so now we're gonna let the magic happen. Got the magic tongs out, so we're gonna start off first with bam. Got me a couple of skinless, boneless, marinated chicken breasts. And bam. Marinated in Red Bone Alley Restaurant. Pineapple, ginger, teriyaki, marinade, and dipping sauce. All right, so now we're gonna open up our Ninja Foodi grill and insert the grill insert, if you will. Okay, I'm gonna give it a little shot of Pam's avocado oil. The reason why I'm using avocado oil to coat the grill is because it has, it has a higher smoke point, one of the highest. I'm going to close that and we're going to fire it up and let it preheat. Grill high, high is five, uh, 500 degrees and start. Now what's happening here is we have this set on high and we are in the preheat sequence and you can see these bars lighting up along the bottom of the display and that is showing you the progress of the preheat sequence. What is happening is you hear a fan running here at the top and it's circulating this hot air all throughout the area. The key here to, that makes this thing so successful and works so well is that it heats that grilling element in there. From complete cold the grill usually takes about six or eight minutes to to fully heat up and be ready to receive whatever you're growing. And what I mean by smoke point on any oil, some of you already know this, but it's the temperature that the oil can be heated to before it begins to smoke. 
And you don't want a house full of smoke, so I use the avocado oil that has a higher smoke point. Temperature probe here that I insert after I flip it one time, after it's about halfway done. I go ahead and insert a probe in there, and I watch the temperature display here. And I can even set an alarm on here once it reaches that, and I can pull it before it completely reaches the done temperature because I want to account for cookover. Okay, it has beeped and it is telling us it is ready for us to add the food. You can see down here in the display, it says add the food. So we're going to reach in our bag here. There are nice long tongs. And we're going to add the food to this screaming hot preheated menu. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna kind of break some of that marinade off as I put it in because that marinade has some sugar in it and I don't want it to burn too quick. And I'm gonna close this. And it already knows that we have put the food in and closed it and now it is going to start counting down the timer. Right, and it's by default set for 10 minutes at high. And those chicken breasts are pretty thin, so um, it might go for cook both of those. Might only take eight minutes or so. So I'm going to give it about four minutes, and then I'm going to insert the thermometer into it after I turn that, so I can closely monitor the temperature. For poultry, the correct temperature for it to be considered safe and done is 165 degrees but I'll pull it at between 155 and 160 degrees because it will continue to cook internally to the desired temperature that I want. If I cook it all the way to 165 degrees, it might, because of the cookover, it might overcook and be tougher and drier. Now I'm gonna wash my tongs off. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and turn these guys. I insert the thermometer in the middle of the thickest one here. We'll get it just in the middle. Not poke it out the other side. And we can see the temperature here is coming up. And it is almost already done because they're very thin. Coming up fast. Okay, this is just beeped once to let me know it's almost done. Nine degrees until done. So what I'm going to do is Pull this right now. Stop. Okay, I'm gonna open it up. I don't want to cook anymore. Got some a little bit of char on there from the sugar on the uh, marinade. Nice grill marks. And let me stick the probe back in there so you can see the temperature. Boom, we're already at 170, 173, so that's why you want to pull it early before it actually gets to the temperature that you're looking to achieve. That took me all of what? 10 minutes total? That is so easy, quick. Now, a little taste. Totally tender and juicy on the inside. The texture, the mouthfeel that I'm getting, I'm getting a little bit of that pineapple, coconut, teriyaki type of islander feel, a hint of the scallion in the background and a little bit of smokiness from the roasted sesame seed. What they're doing now with vegetables to substitute for pasta and pizza crust and rice and mashed potatoes is pretty amazing. They're really starting to make progress in the right direction. Like this pasta being made from zucchini and lentils. You know to me it's got a little bit more of a al dente bite to it than regular pasta. It totally pulls off the disguise as being a pasta. 
you know, and I don't feel bad at all. I'm eating a bunch of gluten and carbs and, and uh, you know, egg yolks, cholesterol, you know, I'm, I'm eating vegetables. <laughs> Cutting through that, super tender. I'm not lying to you. <clears throat> I'm not, no, not a sponsor, not a sponsor. This is my own stuff. I did the reviews, did the research, gave it a shot, blown out of the water. I agree with the reviews. The reviews were stellar. They were like all of them, one bam, one after another. Oh my God, oh my God, this is fantastic. This is great, I love this. If you have that many real people putting out that many good reviews, you get a good chance of making a good purchase. And so it is Friday. The chicken cutlets I made last night were fantastic. And something I didn't mention is that the foodie grill is dishwasher safe. So you just take everything out of the grill, pop it into the dishwasher, and let it do its thing. When it comes out, it's all beautiful again. So this is all clean and ready to go for tonight. Okay, so what I have here are a couple of very small petite cuts of filet mignon or filet mignon. These are very small cuts since it's just me and you're not here to help me eat it. <laughs> One of the keys to having successful results when you're grilling is even thickness, right? So now we have small, large, you just don't want to place these on the grill because one would be done before the other and one would be far more overcooked. How we're gonna get around that is we're gonna kind of, I already trimmed some of the fat off of here and uh, we're just gonna kind of stand this one up, form it into a shape similar of what we're working with here and take some Baker's twine or chef string or whatever you want to call it. And now you can see that we have pretty much an equal thickness on these guys. Tie the string, go around three times so it stays when you tighten it. And give it a nice squeeze. See how it stays? And boom, there she is. Held together nicely. If you want to, you could put a couple more strings around there to uh, collect it up at the bottom there and close the gaps so that it cooks evenly and not more down where the two pieces come together. Okay, it's still kind of early in the day, so I'm gonna season this up so it can sit on there and just kind of absorb a lot of that flavor. Today I will be massaging into the meat a cowboy rub a dry rub seasoning instead of a wet marinade like we used on the chicken breast last night. The cowboy rub, it's a combination of herbs and spices as well as a little bit of brown sugar and some ground coffee. The ground coffee in there is an old uh, trick. You don't really, you don't taste coffee when you cut into the steak. You don't like it. You go, wow, I can taste that Folgers. No, it's not, it doesn't work like that. The coffee gives it a texture. The coffee helps build a very nice sear and crust kind of texture uh, on the outside and you know you don't have to just like oh I'm gonna put something on there and rub it no just dump it that's what I do I dump it in the plate like that give that a shake so it flattens out and then just roll it in it coat all the sides this is thick so you're gonna want all sides coated with the rub there's not a lot of sodium in this so you don't have to worry about oh this is gonna be too salty but after we cook it. No, there's not a lot of sodium in that. And that's something that you want to look for when you get your rubs and before you salt and pepper it, is is there already a lot of salt in there? Okay, so now we're gonna let that chill and come back to it in a little while. Welcome back boys and girls, and guess what? It's dinner time. Now we have our string tied assembled filet mignon that has been rubbed down with the cowboy rub and in the refrigerator for most of the day. And now we're just gonna jump right into it.
Mm. That pink and juicy center is exactly what I was shooting for. Perfect temperature, perfect crust on the outside, the sauteed mushrooms and onions with the garlic and the rosemary and the butter complimented it. Just cherry on the cake. Pam, and I hit it with the balsamic glaze reduction right at the end, and it adds that little extra little special treat without taking anything away from the filet mignon. This creamy risotto with mushrooms and green beans is perfect to be accompanied with a truffle sauce of some sort. Get that nice, rustic, savory, oaky, earthy flavor that really pairs well with the filet mignon from a Ninja Foodie Grill. Who would have thought? You know, and I am picky. I am, I am crucial when it comes to doing the filet mignon properly. If you haven't checked out my video, make sure you go back and check out my video on how to grill outside a perfect filet mignon. Pretty much the same technique I used in here, but I don't, I'm, I'm not able to control direct or indirect heat. I'm at the mercy of the, the unit. Perfect sear, perfect juicy on the inside. The flavors are coming through. It's not as smoky as if I cooked it on a hardwood or a charcoal. That's fine because sometimes with a filet mignon or a really good cut of anything, the smoke can be a little overbearing. It takes over very easily if you over smoke it. And then you feel like you're, you're at a barbecue brisket restaurant with ribs and pulled pork sausage. Fantastic. Can you imagine See, and you saw how quick that was, how quickly I just threw this together, rubbed it down, put it in the fridge, preheated the thing, slapped it on there, put a thermometer probe in it, away it went. It took me longer to prepare the risotto and green beans than it did the, the filet mignon. This is exactly what you need when you're stuck at home in a situation like this, with this zombie apocalypse, apocalypse going on. This is a nice picker-upper, you know, for the family, for you. It's kind of expensive to feed a family with the four kids, you know, filet mignon. You might have to have an alternate menu for them. You know, pour some wine and light some candles and have a nice dinner Friday night with your better half and and uh, enjoy something like this. Mm. Mm. I was going to cook a few more items with the Ninja Foodi Grill, but uh, I don't want this video to go any longer than it is. So I'm going to cut it off here and do a whole nother video involving some of the other things I'm going to be grilling. I'm going to air fry some things like chicken tenders, uh, chicken wings, a few other recipes, air fry recipes that uh, I think you'll enjoy. It's a little bit more peace of mind when you've got an air fryer and you're not using any oil, you're just using a little spray oil and it comes out as good as a deep fry. I've been using it almost every day and it's just a fantastic thing to have in the kitchen. Well, I certainly wish that you were here with me, enjoying this with me and having a little drink of some sort and chatting it up and getting acquainted and talking about uh, our day and our life, but uh, we're not. So, but you can visit me on Facebook and Instagram and in between videos here and see what I'm up to whenever I get a chance to post. Smash that little subscribe button and click that little bell for me. That will give you notifications of whenever I upload a video or leave something in the community tab so you don't miss out on anything. Such as if I do a giveaway video. Hmm? Every now and then I throw one out there and if you missed out on the video a couple days late, you might have missed your chance to have something free. Thank you for watching. I'm Bobby Jean and this is great therapy. <laughs> mm, so good. I wish I had smell-o-vision for you or something. You know, they really need to figure out something out there. Oh, kind of already full. You know what kind of sandwich this this steak would make or a salad? That's a knife. That's a knife. Why? Yeah. Look at that. Look at this. Even the little piece. Notice that's why I took that little piece, shaped it, and tied it to the other one. It cooked just as consistent as the big piece. If you hadn't have done that, it wouldn't have done that. It would have been overcooked. Mm. <laughs> oh, that's a good steak. Juicy, juicy. That's better than a funnel cake at the county fair. I'm gonna tell you right now, that's better than a corn dog. That's better than a chili cheese dog at the baseball game. This is better than lobster. Now, if you had lobster with it, it would be, it just plays around, you know, sings to you. You know, that cowboy rub really adds that great crispy kind of a 
crispy, crunchy texture here and there on the outside. And then the sweetness of the balsamic reduction glaze just comes through there and goes, hi, I don't know. We're just coming in there, whoosh, whoosh, give you a little sweetness. I mean, well, really, I feel kind of guilty. I shouldn't be eating in front of you like this. I'm sorry. Is the camera still on? That just makes you want to go out on a mountaintop and sing. This just makes you want to go get a massage and a facial, petty manicure. I'll be glad when I get my granite countertops. These mills are really going to be looking good on that. Dress them up nicely. <sighs> I should have my own show. I wish I could feed everybody. Everybody deserves this. I'm gonna have a lot of editing to do on this one. But I promise you I'm gonna cut back on the special effects, okay? Because when you do a cooking show, you can't really do, you know, a lot of special effects. It is what it is, you're cooking stuff. Show us how to cook it. I grilled a filet mignon outside for Pippi and I. She was blown out of the water, she couldn't believe it. She's missing out. Here's to you, Pipster. Thanks for the memories. Okay, I gotta quit. Man, that thing is still recording, isn't it? It is recording.